coral bleaching is killing the Great Barrier Reef. Scientists are warning that vast swaths of Australia's stunningly beautiful Great Barrier Reef may never recover from repeated coral bleaching. The Great Barrier Reef is 2,300 kilometers long and covers an area of more than 344,000 square kilometers. This is similar to the size of Japan. However, studies suggest the reef is under threat from repeated bleaching of its corals caused by rising sea temperatures. Corals are marine animals that live in compact colonies of tiny identical individual polyps. Coral polyps produce a limestone skeleton. Layering that takes place over hundreds of years by millions of polyps creates a scaffolding, better known as a reef. Most corals get their food from the microscopic algae that live inside their tissue. The algae convert energy from the sun into food, mostly in the form of sugar. It is the algae that provide coral reefs with their vibrant color. Coral bleaching mainly occurs when a rise in sea temperatures causes the algae to produce toxins. In self-defense, the corals then expel the algae, which exposes their limestone skeleton. Corals can recover if there's a subsequent drop in water temperatures, but without the algae, they risk starving to death. Scientists have warned for decades that burning fossil fuels releases greenhouse gases that warm the oceans and put coral at risk. In turn, that jeopardizes the marine ecosystem, including fish that rely on the reefs to protect them from predators. This could in turn spark a food shortage, because hundreds of millions of people worldwide rely on reef fish as their primary source of protein. In order to reduce ocean temperatures and give bleached reefs a chance to recover, greenhouse gas emissions must be reduced. Greenhouse gas emissions can be cut by reducing meat consumption and using solar and electric energy instead of fossil fuels. So if we want future generations to enjoy the beauty of the Great Barrier Reef, it seems it really is up to us. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. The world's oceans are suffering from a combination of man-made catastrophes. Seabin device designed to keep the ocean clean. Australian surfers Andrew Turton and Pete Kaglinski, who are also best friends, decided to do something after they became frustrated with the amount of trash that was floating in the ocean waters that they spent much of their childhood playing in. The duo quit their jobs and invented the sea bin, which is what they hope will be a sustainable way to reduce the amount of garbage that is polluting the world's waters. Built from recycled materials, the sea bin is fixed to a dock with a water pump that runs on shore power. The pump brings water through the sea bin, which allows the natural fiber back inside the device to catch the floating rubbish and debris before water is pumped back out. Users have the option of installing an oil and water separator to the pump to clean the water that flows through it before the water is allowed to flow back into the ocean. The sea bin is lined with a natural fiber catch bag that collects floating debris. When the bag is full, it can be changed with another clean one, and the collected debris can be disposed of responsibly. Turton and Kaglinski are trying to raise enough capital to turn the sea bin prototype into a reality. According to Australia's ABC News, crowdfunding has helped the two men raise 50,000 US dollars for commercial production, and a video of the sea bin in action has attracted more than 10 million hits online. Instead of eating plankton, young fish are now eating plastic. About 8 million tons of plastic are leaked into the ocean annually, and its impact on the fragile underwater ecosystem has scientists worried. A new study has found that young fish are eating microplastic like junk food, and it's killing them. Microplastic particles result from the fragmentation of large plastic waste, or from tiny manufactured plastic like microbeads in cosmetic products. Measuring less than 5 millimeters, the particles flow through waterways and into the ocean, accumulating in shallow coastal areas. Larval perch that normally feed on plankton have been found to be actively choosing the microplastic as food. This has resulted in their stunted growth and sudden disregard for the smell of predators. The ability to respond to the smell of predators and flee is typically innate in young fish. When placed in tanks with their natural predator, perch that ate plastic were preyed upon four times faster than those that did not. All were dead within 48 hours. Scientists warn that the harmful effects of plastic is not limited to fish and may be felt throughout the food chain. The study is an important step in understanding the silent threat that plastic wastes poses on marine creatures. 
A U.S. ban on microbeads in body care products will take effect from July 2017, with pressure building for other countries to follow suit. Global warming is killing our oceans. A new study predicts that within 15 to 20 years, human-caused deoxygenation will be felt across the world's oceans. With climate change warming seawaters, oxygen levels in the world's oceans are beginning to drop. Surface water with higher temperatures absorb less oxygen. Such surface water is also more buoyant, so oxygen is less likely to make it into deeper water. The resulting conditions are dangerous to marine ecosystems, which depend on oxygen for survival. With the threat already underway, changes in the southern Indian Ocean and parts of the Pacific and Atlantic will be felt as early as 2030. Oceans in eastern Africa, Australia and Southeast Asia, however, won't feel the impact until the next century. Worsening the effects of deoxygenation is an increase in carbon dioxide, causing oceans to be more acidic and less habitable. Researchers say carbon emissions must be reduced if we want to slow the oxygen loss. But monitoring and understanding where the oxygen levels are dipping and how it's impacting our waters is also key. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. New report says plastic will outweigh fish in the oceans by 2050. By 2050, plastic rubbish in the oceans will outweigh fish, according to a new report by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation released at the World Economic Forum in Davos this week. The United States, Europe, and Asia together account for 85% of plastics production, roughly split between the US and Europe on one side and Asia on the other. Some 95% of plastic packaging produced each year is lost to the economy after a single use. Out of all the plastic produced every year, only 5% is recycled effectively. Around 40% is buried in landfills, and about 32% reaches the oceans. This corresponds to dumping the contents of one garbage truck into the ocean every minute. The production of plastic, which now stands at around 311 million tons a year, is expected to quadruple by 2050. This will bring the ratio of plastic to fish in the ocean, calculated according to weight, from 1 to 5 to more than 1 to 1. The report urges people to take action and to rethink the way we use and recycle plastic. It also suggests that manufacturers help reduce plastic waste by producing not only plastic that is reusable but also compostable plastics, a new generation of plastics that are biodegradable through composting. Lebanese men go fishing with firecrackers. This group of fishermen in Lebanon are using a tactic known as blast fishing. In the video, the men can be seen looking into the water before a firecracker is lit and thrown overboard. The explosion sends the fish flying in the air and right into the nets and boats of their would-be captors. The men squeal with glee as the hundreds of fish splash and flop all over the place. The short clip was first posted to Facebook last year, but has since gone viral. This footage was reportedly filmed in Lebanon, a country where the practice of blast fishing has been banned. 